Today's episode of Data Driven is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash data driven. Hello and welcome to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging field of data science. We bring the best minds in data, software engineering, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Now here are your hosts, Frank Lavinia and Andy Leonard. Hello and welcome back to Data Driven, the podcast where we focus on the emerging fields of data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. If you use the analogy that data is the new oil, well, you can consider us car talk because we focus on where the rubber meets the road. With me, as always, on this epic virtual road trip is Andy Leonard. How you doing, Andy? I'm doing well, Frank. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So what's going on, Andy? <laughs> I just returned from a road trip. And for those who are listening to the podcast and who listen regularly, um, you'll probably notice the last couple of three episodes, I've, I've had the same feedback on what's going on. That's because for the first time ever, we're actually recording a, a series of podcast recordings in the same week. So we're doing it the last week of June 2017. I just got back from 11 days in Europe. I spent it in the UK. I was in Ireland for four days and got to attend SQL Saturday Dublin. And then I delivered the first ever from zero to Bemel training in London with Chris Webb and Technitrain. And after that, I had the good fortune to go visit some friends at Redgate. I spent a, a better part of a day just kind of hanging out with the teams and talking some about data and how to make our jobs easier. How about you, Frank? What have you been doing? I was at the Data Intelligence Summit in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, just outside D.C., which is an awesome event. I'm hoping that they make that a regular thing. And it got me thinking, if data is the new oil, right, it's a great analogy to go to. I mean, could you imagine over 100 years ago the concept of a convenience store? Absolutely not. I mean, that would have changed everything. Right. I mean, there was no Circle K or Quick Check or Wawa or 7-Eleven. Why was that? I mean, there were stores. There were kind of stores where you can get stuff quickly. But... But if you look at kind of the economics of convenience stores today or gas stations today, they make more money selling you coffee and soda and candy than they do off the gasoline. That is so true. It's just fascinating that how that business model evolved. And if we were sitting in 1917 versus 2017, I don't think most people would have saw that coming. I definitely agree. And it makes me wonder what's 2117 going to be like. Exactly, right? You're a data philosopher. So, I mean, that that's probably going to make you want to put on the toga and philosophize. There are a lot of thoughts that popped into my mind when you said that. I'm not going to say any of those because we want to keep that clean rating. <laughs> scared. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, traveling and, and going around the world, our next guest is from New Zealand. Well, actually, he lives in New Zealand. We'll ask him where he's from a little bit later, but he's a very good friend of mine, Razor Rad, someone I admire greatly. Been following his blog posts for years as he wrote about all things related to data. He wrote a, a beautiful series back in 2012, examining and reverse engineering the SSIS catalog just a little bit. He didn't do anything bad or wrong. He just went to the documentation online and he created a schema called Helper that you could add to SSIS DB. And what that schema did is it contained a lot of the enumerations, a lot of the numeric enumerations inside of the catalog. And he just did a key value conversion for those things. Gosh, I've used that a bunch of times. Reza, I owe you money uh, <laughs> because, of, because of all the times I've used that helper schema. Um, just by way of introduction, Reza is a data platform MVP. I'm actually running my own training and consulting company, but it is all related to Microsoft products, you know. <laughs> Reza works for himself as a consultant and a trainer and a Power BI mentor. He spoke recently at the Data Insights Summit and he speaks at other summits such as the, uh, the Past Summit, Tech Ed, Past Business Analytics, SQL Nexus, and all sorts of data-related conferences around the globe. Uh, he is the co-leader of the New Zealand BI Users Group. He has tons of experience on database and software systems, um, more than a decade as a consultant in BI and data warehousing. And I could just go on and on, certified Microsoft trainer. There's a lot of information uh, out here. I was reading through LinkedIn, your bio there, Reza. I would like to welcome you to Data Driven. 
thank you. Thank you, Andy and Frank. I'm really glad to be involved in this data-driven episode. And uh, it's always my pleasure to talk with you guys. And we really appreciate you uh, recording so early in the morning. I understand it's already tomorrow where you are. <laughs> So how, what is the future like? Uh, the future is a little bit chilly, you know, it's winter <laughs> here. Probably in your area, it is summer, it is nice, sunny, it is winter in our area. It is not that bad winter. You can still see sun, but it is quite chill environment. But uh, you would definitely love the future. <laughs> okay, great. So speaking of the future, it's it's fair to say that data is certainly um, a big part of the future, if not already a big part of the present. What's your take on this whole explosion of data science that, that is happening? It is, I, I have to say, it is a fantastic, I should say, uh, kind of uh, evolution, as you mentioned. But you mentioned about uh, convenience stores. Uh, the, uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it has been really hard to find out specific data about specific type of uh, business situations. And that was not just for business running, for helping people to do their ordinary lives. So like, like me, for example, if I wanted to search for something specific, there was no such information like internet, let's say 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I had to ask from my friends, from uh, word of mouth, things like that. The evolution of data actually made everyone's life much easier. Now we have access to data through computer, through um, even or a smartphone. Everyone has a smartphone, but the smartphone itself is a device. The data in that smartphone is the most important thing. And the data, when you've got the data, you have all information from the past and present. And also it can help you with lots of data science and machine learning type of technologies to uh, do some prediction. It gives you some recommendation. You've got this thing. I do you like uh, do you like to get other things a lot of actually help in terms of the data related technology comes and helps people like I, I know Reza, you do a lot of training are you seeing companies more interested in training more interested in learning about data science and related technologies absolutely um and majority i would say mainly recently because working with data uh, become easier and easier as time goes by. Like, for example, in, let's say, SQL Server Microsoft Technologies, 10 years ago, uh, you should have been kind of a developer, a consultant to get the up and down of the technology, work with that. Others should ask for some advice from the consultant to get there. Now, technologies are much easier, and most of people prefer to do that either themselves or get some, let's say, contractors to help them build something. But still, they need training. So as, as technologies get easier, they need um, more training to be able to upskill themselves and continue the job and maybe doing that thing themselves. But they need to be trained for that. So I feel, and we actually see that in our business, that lots of people recently are going into the training. Some people, uh, their company get the training paid for them. Some people, even they pay them themselves to get their skill up and be ready for the data market to be able to go through some data related projects. I guess that's kind of the other side of democratizing this technology is more people are going to want to look at it and be trained on it. 10, 20 years ago, um, data related technology was only for, let's say, developers. It was only for people who were being, let's say, uh, like a DBA, someone who actually uh, works with data all the time. But now the trend of technology is going through that way that be available for everyone, should be able to use it, but definitely they need to have some upskilling in terms of understanding how to use it, what is the best way of using it, learning best practices, and that's where training and those kind of things comes in, where Andy uh, is kind of in that uh, area himself as well. He is going around doing trainings of SSIS, Blimo, and things like that. Well, even just spinning up database server now is a few clicks. Or if you're really fancy, a PowerShell script, it's so much more accessible now. Yes, everything actually is much more accessible. Or, or even if you look at the Power BI, uh, everyone in the world, recently heard about Power BI. Uh, 
It, it's a very, uh, very, I would say, simple technology to use. It's not easy because lots of people think that Power BI is easy. You can just drag things around and make things happen. It is not that easy. It is simple. You drag things around and you get reports done pretty quickly. But in terms of building something really fascinating, something that helps really a real world situation or challenge, uh, you need to learn some conceptual designs of that model, some, some uh, stuff about the data modeling, about the data preparation, the ETL part of it. So those are things that people need. But having these technologies, these type of technologies like Power BI, like technologies that are available for everyone to use, it brings even business analysts in the world of the data. It brings sometimes even end users in the world of data. They would like to play with that data themselves and the tool actually provides them such abilities. It's not magic. It won't do the work for you. You still have to understand the problem you're trying to solve. You have to understand basic data concepts. You certainly have to understand statistics uh, to, to really apply this at, say, an enterprise scale. I, I hear what you're saying when you say that. And, and one of the things I've shared with some clients that I've worked with, the old maxim still stands. Garbage in will equal garbage out. What we can do with these nice tools is if we feed them a bunch of junk, we can build these really pretty graphics that are completely inaccurate. So you can do it really, really quickly thanks to the cloud. But I like to put an asterisk on the end there and say exactly what you just said, Reza, and that is the physics, if you will, of data still apply. That's really the, the main thing in the world of data, preparing the data in a way to be presented, not just the way of presenting it. Every part of uh, the way that we work with data is quite important. And preparing the data, presentation of that, modeling the data. If you build your first building stone or block, uh, or let's say uh, your key stone in a wrong way, then everything goes wrong after that. Yeah, it certainly sounds like the foundation is very important. And what we've learned, uh, Frank and I, from both experience and from some reading and from talking to guests, is that the old stuff, the old ETL, extract, transform, and load, data munging, data wrangling, they call it these days in data science, that's still a very large part of data science, getting that data shaped, getting it cleansed, getting it ready for consumption by these nice engines. Uh, some, some people call it data preparation as well, ETL or data preparation. That part is still there. It is still a key component of every actually data related technology, I would say. Even Power BI um, or some other technologies that are out there that people can start with playing with data directly. They connect to their transactional database and start building some reports on top of it. If they don't actually use the concepts of ETL, if they don't actually use proper ETL tools for that, then they are still getting some data which is not absolutely correct. Uh, and uh, their results out of that is not the result that, uh, let's say, a BI system should help them in terms of making their decision. Uh, so in Power BI, we have tools like Power Query, which actually can help in that case, which is similar to using SSIS in the Microsoft BI stack for doing the ETL. So ETL is still, uh, I would say, one of the most important part of the any data related scenario. Without the, having that, we couldn't have actually the other steps built on top of it. Shifting gears just a little, I know you've done some presentations recently. I saw you on my computer screen here. I was watching you. Speak some about uh, what you presented on lately. Tell us what you've been talking about. What excites you? I, I work in the world of data for a really long time. Uh, I think it is started from me being a data developer. Then I moved into SQL Server. The first thing caught me was SSIS. And I've been loving wor working with technologies that actually move the data and do data transformation, SSIS. Azure data, data Factory, and recently much more in Power Query side of uh, Power BI, which is same thing as SSIS in terms of the way the what it does. So, so recently my talks, my blog posts, all of those kind of things are related to Power BI technologies, which is what I do the training and consulting these days for it. Uh, earlier May, I've been in Europe doing the SQL Nexus. So I've been doing some sessions over there for Power BI technologies, then some trips in Australia, then uh, 
in Data Insight Summit in Seattle. I've had a couple of sessions, again, both for Power BI. One was for more kind of data visualization the principles of Power BI. The other one was um, using Power BI for developers, actually, how they can integrate reports in their own application, web application, mobile application, things like that. So these are things that I'm trying to help the community based on that. So I'm uh, helping community to use these technologies to build their own applications, BI applications, working through all those kind of technologies. And these days I'm just uh, traveling around a lot, mainly in New Zealand, Australia area, because you know, it's quite far away from everywhere else, but uh, sometimes in Europe and the States as well. Since I kind of pivoted my own personal career away from front end client development and app development to data science, you know, I have a lot of former colleagues that kind of look at me like, eh. some of them are like, wow, that's awesome. How do developers react to the data side of things? Um, uh, so, so developers, I, I've been a developer, let's say, I don't know how much it was. It was more than 50 years ago, I think, uh, 15 years ago. I've been a developer and uh, developers are not just working with the world of data. They will work with the world of data, definitely, because data is part of their application. But they are mainly talking about uh, how the business logic of that application go through, how to apply that business logic, things like that. Many of developers actually struggle always to find a good, um, good database back end and also good presentation layer front end. So their presentation layer to be a reporting technology, their database back end to be a database technology. So uh, it has been many years that lots of them are using uh, some reliable data, database technologies like SQL Server, some people use other vendors. But in terms of presentation layer, they have struggled a lot. Recently, with technologies like Power BI, they can actually integrate that into their own applications. Um, and they can get the power of uh, reporting with Power BI, which is interactive, which is pretty impressive in terms of the way that it re generates reports, and then integrate that into their application they shouldn't actually spend lots of time to write code for creating every single chart, every single visualization. Power BI would help them in building those kind of things much easier, and it helps them in their development time and getting better results in a faster um, uh, time. So they, they love it, uh, especially when, whenever I present something about you know, Power BI for developers. Uh, the most uh, feedback I hear is that people say that, oh, I didn't know that I can use it in this way and that makes my life much easier. I would definitely use it rather than that specific type of way of doing that. So they love this technology. It is very transformative in terms of the types of rich reporting you can provide to your users with not a lot of effort on a developer's part by just leveraging what the work the Power BI team had done. That's one of the things uh, related to Power BI because you see that every month they update with a new uh, new set of features and they have been doing that for two years now, two years updating the Power BI features every month. It's uh, fantastic actually support from Power BI team, I would say. You cannot see that in lots of other products. It's, it's something special about that. The passion and, and pride that they have in their work on the Power BI team, plus the love that the Power BI community kind of feeds back, it, it creates this uh, virtuous cycle of just just epic. I mean, they've been doing it for two years, right? So this isn't a flash in the pan in terms of, you know, what their update cycle is. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing I would say is the, is the, uh, is the ability of the Power BI team um, in the Microsoft themselves. So uh, Andy and I both know uh, some of the guys in Microsoft BI team. Uh, they have been in uh, SQL Server BI teams for a while, um, for in SSIS team, in all other teams. Um, many of those folks are now part of the Power BI team. So developing uh, based on their uh, wonderful experience in uh, other uh, data related technologies, they are actually building Power BI and they are putting the building blocks of that. And that's why the foundation of this product is so rich that you can actually use it uh, extensively for any data related technology. And this is the point in the show where we thank our sponsors who make data driven possible. You know, on data driven, we talk a lot about data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. 
But did you know the hardest part of any data science related project is data integration? Data scientists often call data integration, data wrangling, or the icky word munging. But it's all about making sure the analytics engine that you're using has valid and clean data. Enterprise Data and Analytics specializes in data integration and can help your enterprise build better data integration solutions faster with best practices and automation. Enterprise Data and Analytics offers training and consulting services for SQL Server Integration Services, SSIS, and Business Intelligence Markup Language, or BIML. Visit entdna.com to learn more. Enterprise Data and Analytics. Data. It's in their DNA. What I'd, I'd like to know, Reza, is what do you see coming? What's the future of data science? I'm seeing that to be even much more easier for a user to use. Uh, as time goes by, it becomes easier and easier for everyone to use. I would see more, um, more data-related jobs in the market in, in the future. Uh, they might not be called as DBA or let's say data developer or BI developer, they might be just simply called a business analyst or they might be called you know, in their current role, they might be, let's say, I don't know, accountants, they might be uh, doing what they are doing right now, but they definitely will deal with data. So I believe everyone in the future who is working with computer would definitely work in a world of data, be able to actually deal with data themselves. So that is the future. And also it would be much easier for them to do some future uh, analysis, uh, recommendation analysis, predictive analysis, things like that based on the current data. because. The technology right now is pretty extensive in terms of how to analyze the past data. But for analyzing the future data, you still need to learn R, you need to understand machine learning, those type of stuff. But these are getting easier and easier every day. So every day you get some predefined formulas that you can configure it and apply on your data set and get some uh, analysis based on that. So my, my understanding is that everyone in the future would be able to analyze their data. It might be a data as simple as um, watering their garden, things like that. What time would help them in terms of getting better effects, working with data, with a lot of IoT technologies. They are away from home. They control something from their home or even that controlling might be some something that works automatically based on uh, some uh, recommendation engine and machine learning. So, so it wouldn't be only for businesses to work with. It would help everyday people life much easier, much faster, and much more reliable in the future. Great answer, Reza. I absolutely love that. You brought up something that came up in an earlier podcast. I believe it was with Mark Cavadio, and he mentioned this, the rise of the citizen data scientist. And I think that's what you were describing just now. Yes. Yeah, and so so data data scientist now is a very specific, uh, I would say, area, very specific niche. You should be really good in analyzing some computer algorithms, understanding some of the sophisticated machine learning algorithm to work with, but it is not like that. Let's say ten years later. Ten years later, I believe everyone would be able to. Uh, analyze those things much easier because there would be a lot of pre-built machine learning algorithms. There would be a lot of tools and ways to analyze the result of your machine learning algorithm to understand that how that works in terms of analyzing your future data. So it should help you to build uh, that kind of application uh, or that kind of usage of the data much easier in the future. Very cool. Well, we have some questions we like to ask all of our guests. Did data find you or did you find data? Uh, <laughs> that, that's actually a kind of a tricky question itself as well. Um, uh, so I, I, I've been a developer, as I said before. So I've been a developer, I think it was about the year 2000 or, or even a bit earlier than that, 1998, something like that. I've been a VB. Six developer and then moved to C sharp development. 
Uh, very quickly, I uh, so like like any other developer, you need to work with the data related technology as well. Otherwise, your application doesn't store data anywhere, right? Uh, so I worked with some data related technologies. I dragged into the data world very quickly because I love the way that data are related to each other. I love the way that we can actually store a lot of these information somewhere and do a lot of analysis, querying that data, moving this data around. So I've been uh, loving this data-related technologies. Uh, I, I think it was uh, me finding the uh, interesting things in the data. So I think I was the person who found the data, not data found me, but, but it was really fantastic, I would say, milestone in my life. I. I've moved into data uh, development. I've been SQL Server developer for a few years. And after that, I really loved uh, data movement technologies, which is, I think, the area that Andy is also working on that quite a lot. So I, I, I loved SSIS. And the th one of the things that actually I started with was a lot of content from uh, people like Andy, from uh, Brian Knight, lots of people who actually developed a lot of content in SSIS world. So I moved into data movement technologies after that, going through the path of SSIS, Azure Data Factory, um, Power Query, Power BI, a lot of current technologies from that point. It often seems like sometimes our, our callings find us and not the other way around. <laughs> Absolutely true. So uh, our next question is, what's your favorite part of your current gig? The favorite part uh, for me is uh, helping others to find their passion in the data-related uh, technology. So I, I actually found my passion in the data-related technologies. I always teach and consult on these technologies. I often get people who are uh, feeling quite excited about these technologies as well. Sometimes they are already, a, let's say, BI developer. They are a SQL Server developer, but they feel uh, much more comfortable now they feel much more in love with the technology they say oh i love that thing about uh, power bi i love that thing about ssis i would love to be more kind of doing these things rather than doing those kind of things so i i i really love this part where i help people to realize what the possibilities of that particular data related path is and helping them to find their own path through that and it helps their lives as well. That's my really favorite part of this whole data related technology and the way that I actually deal with it. That's awesome. Yeah, and we can hear the passion in your voice, Reza, when you talk about that. So it's obvious that, that that's something that fuels you. Um, so we have a few questions here where it's more of a, a fill in the blank. When I'm not working, I enjoy I do work a lot, uh, many, many hours through the day um, because I don't feel like that uh, like I'm working. I, I feel I'm, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I, I never feel that I'm working. I actually love what I'm doing every day. So because of that, I might sometimes work more than 10 hours, 12 hours, even uh, 15 hours a day. But if we put that aside, <laughs> if we say uh, all of that is work, and if I'm not working, what I'm doing, um, I'm doing some music stuff sometimes. I play classical guitar sometimes. Um, I have a quite large dog. So I play with that dog, going to walk with that dog, uh, and hanging out with some friends over here in New Zealand. I also have dogs, so I understand <laughs> the difference between small dogs and large dogs. What type of uh, dog do you have? Uh, it's actually quite a big dog. It's Akita. It's a Japanese oh, wow. breed. Uh, uh, he's uh, 45 kgs. <laughs> he's three oh, years wow. old. He's very big and quite strong, so I have to go walk with him every day, at least an hour or two, something like that. Wow. I have a Weimaraner, so... Yeah, right, I yeah. understand. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so our next question is uh, fill in the blank also. Uh, it says, I think the coolest thing in technology is... Never stopping. Many uh, things around you will see, uh, they, they would grow and they would then sometimes continuously uh, continue to grow slower. Sometimes they even stop. With technology, uh, it never stops. That's the good thing. Some people in our job field, things like that, they think that it is not good that this technology is never stopped because if I'm a 
BI developer, I should always learn a new part of this technology because it never stops. I always need to update my learning, things like that. But I would say the coolest thing about this technology is actually never stopping because it is bringing more features in it. It is making things much easier. If I had to use a technology like SSIS the way that it was in 2005, I had to write a lot of codes myself. I have to and consider a lot of troubleshooting myself but now with the current way of using that lots of those works is already done in the technology uh, as a person who is working with this technology i should actually think about other most important you know, part of the technology part of the data related things that i am working so it is always helping me with that never stopping thing it is always helping everyone's life with actually bringing more feature, bringing more things. So technology is something that never stops, and it is really the fantastic thing about it. Yeah, I agree with you. It's definitely evolving, and it seems like it's constantly evolving. And I hear similar complaints to the ones you described where people lament it. I'll confess, when a new release comes out and or a new CTP, I sometimes feel that same way. I won't say it out loud, but uh, being overwhelmed, I think, is part of the job. So... <laughs> Uh, we we get thrown yes. in over our head. It's time to catch up, right? Another complete this sentence. I look forward to the day when I can use technology to to directly help uh, people lives. Right now, I can use technology mainly. Um, I would say technology in my area. I think because right now technology is directly helping people lives a lot in healthcare, in a lot of uh, things like that in logistics but uh, in my area of things i normally help people indirectly so i help businesses to get more uh, insight out of their data and those businesses are uh, those who are helping uh, people um, in their ordinary life like for example it's a, a convenience store as you mentioned it's a gas station it's a lot of uh, actually businesses like that which i help them in terms of getting insight out of their data and then they help their businesses uh, their actually clients or ordinarily uh, let's say everyone in terms of uh, getting their life better but i would really look forward to the time that technology becomes so much easier to use and i believe that would be definitely and uh, that i directly help people's life if if i could uh, save a minute from someone's life and that person can can, can actually spend that minute doing uh, something they love every day that would be the biggest winner for me i would share something totally different not related to data at all i would some uh, share something about the community that i work through the data with it uh, the first time I met, I think, Andy, I'm not sure when, but, but I think it was 2013. I've been, uh, I've been actually following uh, his blog and books and uh, lots of speakings from, I think, 2006 even. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, and many other friends, many other people in the community area. I, I, I'm uh, in touch with them through internet. Some of them, I still haven't had a chance to meet them in person, but I love their contribution. So it, it's a big community. It's a community of people who are helping the world in getting a lot of actually uh, information around and mainly that is for free. So when me or Andy or many other people, when we write a blog post or when we speak here and there, we are doing that for free and not only because of marketing, things like that, that's uh, put that aside. It is mainly to help the whole community to grow with each other. Everyone have a <clears throat> good opportunity to learn new things. Um, there are a lot of wonderful people in this community and uh, they really help each other. Uh, one of the good things I like about these type of uh, conferences around, like past summit, like many other conferences, is that uh, you would meet a lot of community people around. You would see them. All of them are really passionate about what they are doing. Everyone has their own part of the contribution. It might be just answering a forum question, or it might be a blog post. Sometimes it is as big as writing a book. You know, or speaking somewhere, 
but it is a contribution. A lot of people are contributing in that way. And that's what I love about the thing. If we say, uh, I'm, like, I'm talking about something <laughs> totally different from the data world, uh, this community would be a really good thing to mention. That was a great thing to mention. Community is a fantastic thing to mention. I totally agree with you. Uh, we're participants in an awesome developer community. And I think our part of it, the data community, and now watching that kind of grow into the data science community, they've always been very helpful. It's always been very open. And like you, I'm honored to be a, a participant in the community. I, you know, I share some when I can help. And I think I learn a lot more than I share. So I completely agree with what you said. Where can people learn more about what you're up to, Razor? So this week, I'm doing a week of RBI training in Oakland. Next week, it would be in Australia, Perth. And the week after in Wellington, uh, for most of people, they think Australia and New Zealand are the same place. It's not the same place. We are uh, quite far from each other. It's four hours flight from the city in New Zealand to a city in Australia, the closest, if I <laughs> say. So it's pretty far from each other. So I'm doing a lot of training these days here and there. In August, I'll be in Data Platform Geek Summit in Asia, in India, which I'm looking forward to it because I haven't been in India before. We should see. Maybe um, maybe in October, I come for past summit as well, uh, which I love to be there. I've been there from uh, 2013, speaking in different sessions. I know that you are there and and I'm really looking forward if I could be able to come for that and meet you again there. Same here. I look forward to catching up with you at the summit if you're able to make it. Is there a website where people can learn more about your company and your speaking engagements? Uh, yes. So my website is uh, radicat.com. Um, it is a lot of recently articles about Power BI, a lot of courses that we do, all of those are listed there. Some books, for example, a free Power BI book that I put there, it's about 1,000 pages, a PDF book, everyone can download it. Uh, also, it's not just me, it is Layla with me and some others. Layla is mainly focusing on uh, machine learning type of stuff, advanced analytics. So if you go to that website, you will find Power BI articles mainly from me, and machine learning articles and advanced analytics articles from Layla and a lot of actually free stuff is there. So you can read those free stuff and also information about our upcoming courses, upcoming conferences that we are going to speak. And you can uh, get hold of us. You can actually contact us uh, in terms of any questions. Feel free to ask. We are more than happy to answer any types of questions. Don't think that all of your questions cost money. So you can <laughs> easily ask any questions if you have. Great. Well, thank you for being on the show. It's a, It's been an honor to have you. It's always great to have someone who's such a big presence in the community, as well as someone who's really got a finger on the pulse of where data is going. Thank you. Thank you, Frank and Andy. I really appreciate this. It is always an honor for me to uh, actually have a chat with you guys. And I, I really love to be, uh, to actually uh, be involved in this and uh, your uh, data-driven episodes. I still haven't had a chance to listen to them, but I believe it would be fantastic having a lot of people in this community. So I would definitely follow this. Thank you so much, Reza. We should have the show out very soon and really enjoyed the interview. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Data Driven. Don't just listen, become a data driver by going to datadriven.tv to sign up to join the community, access to special events, tips and tricks, and more. Sign up today at datadriven.tv.